I recently read a quotation by Wayne Dyer, and it says, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And today we're going to look at how we tend to our precious hearts. So again, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And today we're going to look at how we tend to our precious hearts. We're going to be exploring what the heart, the organ is, will experience the psychic center around the heart, and this is the energy and information around our heart, and we will attune with the love that radiates from that center, experiencing it within us and beyond us. So to begin, we'll look at the physical heart. Our heart beats an amazing 100,000 times per day. And pumps about 2,000 gallons of blood per day. A seventh temple degree monograph says the following about what happens during this process. It refers to the two previous monographs, and it says, while studying the last two monographs, you probably notice that digestion and respiration have blood as a common factor. In fact, blood supplies to the cells of the body those nutritive substances they need, along with the quantities of oxygen and cosmic essence necessary for maintaining their physical and psychic vitality. It continues, since the food and drink we absorb constitute the negative polarity of the vital life force and the oxygen and cosmic essence contained in the air constitute its positive polarity, we can see that blood distributes the dual polarity of the vital life force to the whole body. And the heart, of course, is the organ that pumps the blood. The monograph then continues there are two systems of blood circulation, the lesser circulation and the greater circulation. The lesser or pulmonary or lung related circulation carries blood from the right side of the heart to the lungs and then on to the left side of the heart. The greater or general circulation propels reoxygenated and revitalized blood from the left side of the heart to all parts of the body and returns it to the right side of the heart. When blood leaves the left side of the heart on its way to all parts of the body, it is charged with oxygen and life-giving cosmic essence and is cleansed of all carbon dioxide and other waste products that were collected in the organs. It now carries the negative and positive polarities of the vital life force into every cell. And it's the heart that's the organ that makes all of this possible. We're going to watch an animation of this now. This video is a couple of minutes long and it's from the Mayo Clinic and it will describe the process that I just mentioned. Your heart is a pump. It's a muscular organ about the size of your fist and located slightly left of center in your chest. Together, your heart and blood vessels make up your cardiovascular system, which circulates blood and oxygen around your body. Your heart is divided into four chambers. These include two on the right, called the right atrium and right ventricle, and two on the left, called the left atrium and left ventricle. The division protects oxygen-rich blood from mixing with oxygen-poor blood. Your heart has four valves that keep your blood moving in the correct direction by opening only one way and only when they need to. These valves include the tricuspid, mitral, pulmonary, and aortic valves. 
Each valve has flaps, called leaflets or cusps, that open and close once during each heartbeat. In the beginning of a pumping cycle, oxygen-poor blood, shown here as blue, returns to the heart after circulating through your body. The oxygen-poor blood fills the right atrium and then flows to the right ventricle, where it is pumped to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. The lungs refresh the blood with a new supply of oxygen, which comes from the air that you breathe in. The now oxygen-rich blood, shown in red, then returns from the lungs and enters the left atrium. The oxygen-rich blood then flows from the left atrium to the left ventricle. The blood is then pumped through the main artery that supplies blood to the body, called the aorta, to supply tissues throughout your body with oxygen. Your heart is nourished by blood too. Oxygen-rich blood is delivered by coronary arteries that extend over the surface of your heart. A beating heart contracts and relaxes. Contraction is called systole, and relaxation is called diastole. During systole, your ventricles contract, forcing blood into the vessels going to your lungs and body. Your ventricles then relax during diastole and are filled with blood coming from the upper chambers, the left and right atria. Then the cycle starts over again. This cycle is driven by your heart's electrical wiring, called the conduction system. Electrical impulses begin high in the right atrium, in the sinus node, and travel through specialized pathways to the ventricles, delivering the signal for the heart to pump. The conduction system keeps your heart beating in a coordinated and normal rhythm, which in turn keeps blood circulating. This results in the continuous exchange of oxygen-rich blood with oxygen-poor blood that is necessary to keep you alive. So this is an animation of what I just described from the monographs. Also in the monographs, it states that to ease the workload of our heart, we must abstain from consuming toxic substances. And this is because the heart needs to accelerate its rhythm in order to eliminate toxins from the body through the bloodstream. We also need to relax physically and mentally. And the Rosicrucian meditation techniques allow us to do that. We need to avoid negative thoughts, which result in anxiety and we should exercise. So this builds the muscle itself through exercise and keeps the vessels clear. The American Heart Association provides a lot of helpful information on a healthy heart, including diet and lifestyle. So they suggest that we know how many calories we should be eating and drinking to maintain our ideal weight. And this is because if we're overweight, our heart needs to work harder. Someone's blood pressure rises when the heart has to pump harder to deliver blood to a growing network of arteries in a larger body. So it has more work to do over a larger area. And over time, the struggling heart muscle becomes thicker, increasing the risk of developing heart failure and arrhythmias. The American Heart Association suggests that we should aim for at least two and a half hours of moderate physical activity over a week. So that's about 30 minutes, five days a week, or one hour and 15 minutes of vigorous activity per week. For diet, they recommend a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, whole grains and products made of mostly whole grains, healthy sources of protein, they suggest mostly plants such as legumes and nuts, fish and seafood, low fat or non-fat dairy, and if you eat meat and poultry, ensuring that it is lean and unprocessed. They suggest that um, we consume a minimal amount of processed food. And processed food is anything that alters the natural state. So this might include adding preservatives, or flavors or unnatural nutrients. And um, 
This also includes things like salt, sugars, and fats. Foods with ingredients added for flavor and textures, such as sweetener, spices, oils, colors, and preservatives should be avoided. And this especially includes hidden ingredients, uh, hidden additives in things like salad dressings and cake mixes and jarred pasta. And then other food that's heavily processed includes ready to eat food like crackers and chips and deli meat. And um, highest on the list of processed foods are things like frozen or pre-made meals, including frozen pizzas and microwavable dinners. And we should, for the sake of our heart, limit the intake of refined sugar and salts. So we also have techniques to help us relax. I said that in the monographs, it suggests that we find a way to relax in order to have less stress and anxiety. We're given many Rosicrucian techniques, meditation techniques that focus on our breath. And when we breathe normally and just focus on the air as it goes in and out of our nostrils, this communicates to our autonomic nervous system that everything is okay. So it's when we breathe normally and just, you know, if our mind wanders, we just gently bring it back to the air going in and out of our nostrils. This is communicating to our heart. You don't need to increase the heart rate or our blood pressure. This is a Rosicrucian meditation technique that's introduced very early in the monographs. We can also be lighthearted. We can smile and laugh when we can. And I find a suggestion very interesting. Someone said once that if you're gonna be able to laugh at something in the end, like if after time you laugh about it, do your best to laugh about it in the moment too. And this really releases and relieves us of stress on the heart. And also to just find opportunities to laugh or to smile. Recently, I was on an elevator and this man came in after me and he had a, a, a very well-trimmed white beard and he had kind of long white hair, but it also was very well-trimmed. And when he turned around in the elevator, he had on this jersey and on the back, it said Santa. And I was curious if this was a baseball jersey or a soccer jersey, I couldn't quite tell. So I said to him, does Santa have a favorite sport? And he said, why, of course, have you never heard of the reindeer games? So I greatly appreciated his humor. We can act silly sometimes. We can read funny books or watch funny videos. I've prepared a few things that just make me laugh. These are some statements by mostly well-known people that I just find very funny. So I'm gonna share a few of these with you. The first one is by Groucho Marx. And he was known to have said, I've had a perfectly wonderful evening, but this wasn't it. Kurt Vonnegut said, true terror is to wake up one morning and discover that your high school class is running the country. Will Farrow said, before you marry a person, you should first make them use a computer with slow internet to see who they really are. Rodney Dangerfield said, when I was a kid, my parents moved a lot, but I always found them. Now this one is anonymous. Thousands of years ago, cats were worshiped as deities. Cats have never forgotten this. Edgar Bergen said, hard work never killed anybody, but why take a chance? Another anonymous saying is, some cause happiness wherever they go. Others, whenever they go. And now 
I have three quotations from a fellow St. Louisan. As some of you know, I'm from St. Louis and Yogi Berra, the baseball player and coach um, was known for making statements that many people found, found funny. So I'm going to uh, uh, tease about my fellow St. Louisan. Yogi Berra said, the future ain't what it used to be. He also said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. And his last one, which was his, uh, this last one, which was his most famous one, it's like deja vu all over again. So those are my funnies that I prepared for you. The heart is also an energy center. We are beings of energy swimming in an ocean of energy or an ocean of consciousness. The ancient Egyptians were aware of this. They described nine aspects of the soul. One is the Ba. You may have heard of the Ka and the Ba. The Ba is our energy, our vibrating, our, our vibrations, our frequency that we take with us in the world. It's the energy that we bring with us. And they also believed that an aspect of the soul was called either the Ib, I-B, or the Ab, A-B. No one's certain which vowel is used at the beginning, but it's the, the aspect of the soul that is at the heart center. For the ancient Egyptians, the Ib was the source of intelligence, of feelings and actions. It remained in the body while other organs were removed. So after uh, an ancient Egyptian passed on and they were being prepared for mummification, the heart remained in the body and the brain was discarded. We now know that the heart sends much more information to the brain than it receives including signals that can influence perception, emotional experience, and higher mental processes. The HeartMath Institute is an organization that's been studying heart coherence since around 1991. And at that time, Dr. J. Andrew Armour introduced the term heart brain. And he showed that the heart's complex nervous system really qualified as a little brain. And here's some of what they say about this. The heart brain, like the brain proper, has an integrate, integrate, intricate network of several types of neurons, neurotransmitters, proteins, and support cells. It can act independently to learn remember, feel, and sense. We're talking about the heart now. One of the key discoveries that the HeartMath Institute researchers made about this heart brain, which is also called the intelligent heart, is that intentionally experiencing emotions can change the information that the heart sends to the brain. And we're gonna practice this in a little while. Their studies have shown that emotions such as compassion, care, and love, or just general positive feeling states can actually benefit us in many ways. For example, participants in their research, when they were asked to intentionally feel positive emotions, the result was that their heart rhythms became smoother and more stable especially after having felt a negative emotion. So we're able to send thoughts of love and gratitude to our entire beings, to our brain and to others. And we're going to do that soon. Another thing that the ancient Egyptians believed about the heart was that a person's memory was housed in the heart center and that it recorded everything that happened during our lives. And at the end of our life, there was going to be a final judgment. You've probably seen these images before from ancient Egypt. The deceased person would be standing before a scale 
And on one scale is a red jar, and this has the heart of the deceased person. That red jar is actually the hieroglyph for the heart. And then on the other side is the feather of truth or the feather of Mat. The goddess Mat, she symbolizes order as in the opposite of chaos. And it was essential to the ancient Egyptians that they had order or mat in their lives. So in the final judgment scene, whether it's on a papyrus or on a tomb wall, it's always the same procedure. The deceased person walks past 42 deities and they have to make the 42 negative confessions. So, so the confession to Mott is, you have to be able to say no to each of the questions you're asked by the deities themselves. And they would say, the name of the tomb owner, have you ever murdered anyone? Have you ever stolen anything? And then the, the questions start getting harder. Eventually they ask, have you ever eavesdropped? Have you ever caused anyone to weep? Have you ever denied a hungry man food? And if the deceased person couldn't say no to all of those questions, their heart on the scale would be heavy and it would be unbalanced. And there was a creature waiting to devour that person's heart. The creature is called a moot or a mit. No one, again, the, the ancient Egyptians didn't write their vowels, so no one's sure, but it's something like that. Or it could also be a moot. And this creature is made up of a lion, a crocodile, and a hippopotamus. And these were considered the man eaters in ancient Egypt. Those animals were very dangerous in ancient Egypt. And she would devour the person's heart if they didn't pass the confession to Mott, if their heart was heavy. So their conscience, the record of their life is recorded in their heart. And you couldn't proceed to the afterlife, to, to an eternal afterlife, if you didn't pass this test. The ancient Egyptians didn't worship this deity, this, um, this creature, Amut. They were afraid of her. And they had spells in the book that's called the Book of the Dead. But the more accurate translation for the title of that book is the Book of the Coming Forth by Day. And it's the story of how you make it through tests and trials to the afterlife, to eternal life. And in your museum, the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum, we have a collection of scarabs that are amulets that on one side is a scarab beetle, which symbolized eternity. And on the other side, there are these hieroglyphs. And that would be placed on the heart of the mummy. And it always said something like this. This is the translation from one of them. My heart of my mother, my heart of my earthly being, do not stand against me as witness beside the deities of the ritual. And this was during their final judgment. Do not say against me, he did do it about my actions. Do not make a case against me beside the great deity. So the person, like their last shot before they begin their, their journey to the afterlife is asking that, they did something bad that the heart doesn't reveal it. And it ends with, tell my goodness to Ra, to the deity. The Rosicrucian teachings provide techniques that we can attune with what we call psychic centers in our being. And the heart center is one of those. We have the physical body, with the brain and the cerebral spinal nervous system and our five objective senses and objective consciousness. And then we have a corresponding psychic body. And the brain of the psychic body is the hypothalamus gland. 
in our head, the center in our head. It's also very closely connected with the pituitary and with the autonomic nervous system and our seven major psychic centers. And this is our psychic consciousness. So we have objective consciousness through our senses and our psychic consciousness, which is what we perceive on a vibrational level. So the main function of the hypothalamus, and this is deep in our brain, is to keep our body in a stable state called homeostasis. And it does this by directly influencing the autonomic nervous system, which in turn then manages hormones. Our hypothalamus sends signals in the form of releasing hormones to tell the anterior and posterior pituitary when to secrete its hormones. And the psychic centers are described in detail in our lessons in the seventh temple degree. These monographs state, the psychic centers serve two roles, propagating throughout our being, the psychic energy conveyed by the cosmic essence contained in the air and perceiving extrasensory phenomena. There are 12 psychic centers and they're all around either a gland or an organ or a plexus. The solar plexus is one of them and that plexus um, uh, really influences many organs nearby. Seven of these centers are major and five are minor. And it's impossible to develop the psychic centers by practicing anything physically or by absorbing any substances. The only way to do this, to develop these centers is through mystical methods that involve intoning vowel sounds based on visualization and deep breathing. And we, the seven major psychic centers and the vowel sounds that stimulate those are introduced in the very first lessons that we receive as Rosicrucians so that we can begin developing these centers as soon as possible. They are around these glands and organs and the solar plexus. However, they aren't the heart center or the thymus, they, they, they aren't the heart or the thymus gland, they're centers around these areas. The psychic centers are centers of information and energy. The primary aim of the mystic is not to develop the psychic center so as to acquire extrasensory powers. The objective should be to live harmoniously with a philosophy that contributes fully to making us happy and enhancing our relationships with others. And another way of saying this is that the purpose of developing these psychic centers is to open ourselves to intuitive guidance, to create frequencies within our being so that we can hear the voice of the master within, of our inner self. A Rosicrucian manuscript states, the goal of the mystic is to develop the intelligence of the heart. The goal of the mystic is to develop the intelligence of the heart, to create resonance or coherence within this center and beyond this center. Now the heart psychic center is the counterpart, uh, counterpart of the heart itself. It's therefore located in the same general area, which is between the two lungs in the center of the chest. On the psychic level, the heart center is the origin of the emotion that we call love. It is through this center that we feel the love that others have towards us. And in turn, it radiates the love that we feel for others. When we intone a vowel sound related to the heart center, it, the vowel sound is pronounced A, like the letter A, but it's spelled E-H. 
So it's E-H, but it's spelled, it's pronounced A, and it's intoned on middle C. So this, the heart center is the center of love. And I've gathered a few things that some mystics have said about the heart. Francis of Assisi said, tell me about your heart, my every word says. Speak to me as if we both lay wounded in a field and are gazing in wonder as our spirits rise. Meister Eckhart wrote, the awakened heart is like a luminous sphere, just giving, just giving without thought to any who may come close or gaze at it. A Rosicrucian manuscript says, eternity knocks at the door of our hearts and seeks to enter to obey its calls, to entrust ourselves joyously with our souls and bodies to the inner light is the beginning of true life. And we're given techniques for radiating this love and we're going to practice some of these. We're not the only ones who are exploring how we can send more love from our heart centers into the world. Stanford Medical School has an organization called the Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education and provides techniques on how we can be more compassionate. There are similar centers at the University of Notre Dame, at the University of California at San Diego, and the University of Wisconsin. A primary way that we can experience love in our hearts is through gratitude. When we think of things that we're grateful for, it's always positive because we're thinking of, if we're grateful, we're thinking of things that we're glad happened. So we're remembering things, we're remembering times that we consider to be positive. This message then recreates the feeling as though it is happening again. So now I invite you to take a few moments and write down five things that you are grateful for. Write down five things that you're grateful for. And if you need any help with this, getting you started, uh, the first one you could put is your beating heart. So write down five things that you are grateful for. Now, place your hand on your heart and just look at your list or think of those five things. And have your face express what you feel in your heart as you think about what you're grateful for. I love looking at your faces. Now write down five more things that you're grateful for.
you're doing great. Feel free to continue this as often as you like. And again, as you're thinking of what you're grateful for, feel that in your heart and let your face express it. H. Spencer Lewis wrote, to the mystic, prayer is not an occasion for personal petitioning, but for spiritual communion. It is a time when the soul within us and the deepest and most inner parts of our being sacredly, sincerely, and quietly speak to the divine and express the deepest wishes of our hearts and minds. So now we're going to practice a meditation and we'll start this in a moment. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on our breath and we just feel the breath as it goes in and out of our nostrils. And if our mind wanders, we just gently bring our attention back to feeling that air going in and out of our nostrils. And again, this communicates to the autonomic nervous system that's always trying to create homeostasis. Everything's fine. No need to elevate my heart rate or my, my blood, my uh, pulse rate. Everything's fine. Then we're going to practice the overall exercise where we focus on different parts of our body. And this moves our focus away from our analytical mind and attunes us with the energy and information of which we're made. Then we're going to focus on our heart with gratitude. We will intone the vowel sound A seven times. And you're welcome to do that with, you can just do it without doing this, or if you, if you want to, you can also take your thumb and your first two fingers of your dominant hand and place them on your heart center. So you just like this, or you can just place your dominant hand on your heart center. I'm right-handed, so my right hand is my dominant hand. And then we're going to create resonance within the heart and around the heart center. And then we're going to radiate that harmonic frequency throughout our being and beyond our body. So let's begin. If you would please say, sit in whatever way is most comfortable for you and take three deep breaths, becoming more relaxed with each exhalation. Now breathe normally and feel the air going in and out of your nostrils. If your mind wanders, no problem. Just gently bring your attention back to feeling the air going in and out of your nostrils. Now focus your attention on a tiny vibrating cell in your left big toe. 
Feel the energy vibrating there. Expand your awareness to your entire left foot. Now focus your attention on a tiny cell in your right big toe. And expand your attention to your entire right foot. Now your left lower leg. your right lower leg. Your left upper leg. Your right upper leg. your hips, your abdomen, your chest. Now focus your attention and the fingers on your left hand. Expand your awareness to your entire left hand. Now the fingers on your right hand. your entire right hand. Your left forearm. Your right forearm. Your left upper arm. your right upper arm, now bring your awareness to the energy vibrating at the base of your spine, as you draw your awareness up your spine be aware of your lower back, your middle back, your upper back, your shoulders, your neck, your jaw, your mouth, your ears, your nose, your eyes, your 
your forehead. the top of your head. Take a gentle breath in and feel yourself with every breath in complete harmony. Your entire being is vibrating in complete harmony. With every slow, gentle breath. And now place your attention on your heart center. And think of something that you are profoundly grateful for. Experience this in your heart center. This center of energy and information, this vibrational frequency around the place of your heart, but it's not the organ, it's the, it's the energy and information that surrounds it, even extending beyond your body. And see this energy center, this psychic center, vibrating with a yellow energy, radiating from your heart center. Now place your dominant hand or the thumb and the first two fingers of your dominant hand on your heart center. And in a moment we'll inhale and as we exhale, we'll intone together the vowel sound A seven times. Ready? Inhale. A. Hey. 
Your heart center has responded to the intonation of these vowel sounds, creating the most perfect harmony in this center of energy and information. The radiating yellow light, energy and information flowing in the most perfect frequency, growing brighter and stronger, radiating beyond your heart center to the other centers in your being. Each center responding in resonance to the harmony of your heart center. And you extend this resonant energy beyond your body into the room where you are, beyond the building where you are, into your community, your city, see your entire city enfolded in this radiant yellow vibration. Now it's expanding to your state or province and your country your entire country is enfolded in this radiant energy from your heart from your heart center. And it expands until you see our entire beautiful planet enfolded with our combined radiant yellow energy. This resonant coherent frequency. Just like the coherence of your heart created coherence between the other centers in your being, the coherence coming from each of us creates resonance. It's more than just our individual frequency or heart energy. It's a resonance between us. We are contributing to the upliftment of humanity 
we are contributing to the well being of all beings and our planet. And this radiates from our heart center. When we tend to our precious hearts, it benefits more than us individually. It benefits those with whom we come into contact. Our communities, our countries, the entire world, our planet, all beings. So mote it be. When you're ready, Slowly prepare to ground yourself a little. Remembering this feeling in your heart center. Remembering the opportunity that we have to be of service to others and to contribute to our own well being. So move around a little bit in your chair. Take a couple of deep breaths. And thank you so much for your service. <laughs>